If you want to make $100,000, a $1 million, $100 million, anybody can do it. Welcome to Real Estate Market Moves, where we're going to talk about all of the latest in residential commercial real estate with your weekly update, and more importantly, what you can do with the information and how you can use it. So let's jump in and see what's going on. The big news this week so far uh, is interest rates, but we'll get to that in a second. In terms of the weekly housing trends, the median list price grew by 1.1% year over year. New listings, uh, that's sellers putting homes on the market, uh, was down again this week by about 7.5%. Active inventory decline for the first uh, uh, for home sales lagging behind last year, 3.7%. So active inventory declined a little bit. So uh, less homes being put on the market and um, active inventory is declining as well. So further shrinking uh, the available homes for sale. Homes spent the same number of days on the market pretty much compared to last year. And you can see uh, the median list prices year to date were up 2.9%. Uh, new listings down 18.8% year-to-date, active listings up 26.9%, uh, and the days on the market were about 13 days slower. So really interesting things going on in the housing market right now. But the big news, again, uh, are mortgage rates with the 10-year Treasury surging, like we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Uh, that drives mortgage rates. Rates are at levels we haven't seen for probably 17 to 20 years, depending on where that 10-year treasury is, uh, approaching the 8% mark. So the 30-year mortgage is approaching 8%. That is the, um, I think, the, the highest we've seen since going back to probably the 90s, somewhere in the 90s. I bought my first house in 1990. Interest rates were nine and three quarters percent at the time, and I bought at a buy-down. Uh, which is what a lot of the home builders are offering to move houses. We'll talk about new construction in a minute. Now, the other thing that happens is uh, mortgage applications are being rejected because of income qualifications. So a lot of transactions are falling through. Builder cancellations are through the roof right now. Um, and, you know, purchase applications are getting declined because people can't qualify at these interest rates. Uh, and of course, the mortgage demand is dropping altogether as less people are interested in buying a house at these uh, rate levels with the price levels that we're seeing uh, and lack of inventory and selection on the market. Again, not every market. Some markets are still uh, red hot. Other markets are you know, contracting more uh, than others. You know, real estate is hyper-local. So you have to take that into consideration. Um, you know, as far as you know, new listings and things like that, uh, with rates being as high as they are, people are hesitant to put their houses on the market because they have no choices. Number one, where to move. Number two, uh, they're not going to trade a 3% mortgage in for an 8% mortgage. And number three, the equity is getting wiped out. The big thing that a lot of people aren't talking about is with the rates where they are and prices declining in a lot of areas, we're seeing about you know 10 to 15, maybe 20% declines in pricing uh, or values of houses in certain areas. The equity is getting wiped out on those houses. Um, and really what we're working back towards is a level of values. We're still well above, 40% above where values were uh, pre-pandemic. So as prices come back and correct 20%, you're still 20% above pre-pandemic levels. Uh, so there's still a ways to go just to get back to pre-pandemic levels. And in terms of a housing crash, a lot of people think that 8% rates, 9%, uh, 10% rates are going to cause a housing crash. Uh, you know, you have to really define what a crash is. You know, a crash is where you see a lot of foreclosures, you see houses for sale everywhere and not selling, you know, inventory levels rising, things like that. We're just we're just not there. This is not a 2008 uh, kind of event, but it does make it difficult for people that want to buy a house. So we'll talk about at the end what all this means, uh, you know, for people looking to buy a house. The big thing is, especially in new construction, so a lot of builders are pulling back right now, pulling out of some com communities and um, purchases, purchase applications and reservations are down in new build communities. But we saw the same thing happen last year about this time when rates jumped up to 7% uh, coming, coming from, you know, low high fives to low sixes up to 7% last year during October, November. We saw new construction dip into the end of the year. Same thing happened. Builders were looking to lay people off. We're pulling back. And then rates dropped all the way back down to 6% in February. And we saw things pick back up again and really didn't start to cool off 
until rates got back into that 7% range. So that, you know, it used to be the five and a half percent was the big range for people. That 7% is a big number. And most of the home builders are offering buy downs. Like when I bought my first house, I bought on a three, two, one buy down. So the, that is where the builder can pay a premium to buy the rate down over a period of time. Now that is an adjustable rate. Uh, and the people that have bought over the last couple of years with adjustable rate buy downs are going to see those reset, you know, this year and next year. So that'll bring, you know, some stress into the market. We do have rising insurance costs, rising taxes, things like that, that are putting a little bit of pressure uh, on, especially investment property owners like short-term rentals and year-round rentals. But again, we still have such a lack of inventory over a million homes short uh, for traditional inventory with rates as high as they are. And that's going to contract inventory even more. And if rates do come down, that's going to spur even more buyer demand, which could, you know, keep prices elevated and in and even increase prices further from here. Switching to commercial real estate, uh, there is a lot of potential stress coming down on in, you know, the line in commercial real estate. There's $2.6 trillion worth of loans coming due through 2028 over the next five years. Uh, there's $1.5 trillion coming due in the next 18 months. And out of that, uh, commercial real estate represents about, or uh, multifamily represents about 38% of that, $2.6 trillion. And right now, just uh, but between now and the end of 2024, there's over $50 billion in multifamily debt that has to be refinanced that's coming due. And at these rate levels, uh, it's going to be very difficult for these operators to do that. We're already starting to see some assets come on the market at discounts. Uh, the office sector is still uh, definitely taking a beating. Um, and, you know, vacancies are still a problem in some of the biggest cities. And, um, you know, that's not likely to be resolved anytime soon. So a lot of those office buildings will just sit vacant. Some of them will get bought up for pennies on the dollar. The new owners will lease out what they can and they'll be fine. Uh, cash flowing, some of those buildings will get repurposed. Some of them will get torn down. So it's an interesting time in the commercial real estate market. So where are the opportunities? You know, higher rates and scarcer credit. So the two things that drive values in real estate and in activity are uh, the availability of debt and the cost of that debt. So as rates go higher and the debt becomes harder to get, um, you know, that creates stress in the commercial real estate market and residential. Um, so that does create opportunities, though, uh, because, uh, you know, these assets have to be refinanced. If they can't be refinanced, they'll be sold, uh, sold off. So that ultimately is going to create some opportunities. Commercial real estate debt is widely held. Much of it will mature in the next few years um, out of the share of outstanding four and a half trillion in debt backed by income producing multifamily commercial real estate by lender type. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of, you know, top banks that have about 12 percent. Regional banks have about 13.8 percent. Community banks, 9.6. Small banks, 3.2. Then you get into the agency, which is Freddie and Fannie. Uh, life insurance companies, CMBS and other private, you know, shadow banking is about 12.4 percent of that. Uh, so that's going to create, you know, a lot of stress and a lot of opportunities. Uh, CMBS issuance, issuance, commercial mortgage-backed security issuance is down. So that means it's getting harder and harder to get debt to finance these properties. So people that have to refinance are going to have a difficult time if the debt's not available. And that debt that is available is super expensive. So a lot of investors, and a lot of companies are raising distressed debt funds to go in and buy that distressed debt. Some of them are raising distressed asset funds to go in and buy the assets uh, that are becoming distressed. And that's really where your opportunities are uh, in the next 12 to 18 months, 24 months. There's going to be a lot of these assets coming up for sale at a discount. And a lot of people are not going to be in a position to buy these assets. Uh, as far as residential housing goes, whether you're looking to you know live in a house, buy a house, you know, as your permanent residence, or if you want to rent something out, um, the housing market right now, the inventory levels across the board are still pretty low. Some areas are correcting faster than others. Austin, Texas is one area that's taken a big hit, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, Nevada, uh, some other markets uh, in the country are starting to see inventories rise a little bit. Uh, but again, with interest rates going as high as they are right now and coming into the time of the year that we're coming into where inventory typically contracts anyways, going into the winter and the holidays and things like that, that could put a little bit more, more pressure on inventories. Uh, the rates are going to keep people from selling. So we still have a big supply problem, inventory problem. So we need to see some of these rental properties, short-term rentals, 
uh, year-round rental properties uh, coming to the market from distressed sellers uh, that insurance premiums are rising on, taxes are rising on, operational costs are rising on to add some inventory to the market. So that will create opportunities for people looking to buy, you know, either primary residence or investment property. So keep an eye on the short-term rental market, keep an eye on other rental properties, keep an eye on inventory levels, days on market, and price reductions. We are seeing price reductions in almost every market across the country, most of them. There are markets where you're still seeing properties that are priced right, getting sold in days with multiple offers. Uh, so it's very interesting. Real estate's hyper-local. Every market's different, so you got to really be on top of it. So this is your real estate market update. I'm going to be doing these weekly. I'll see you on the next video.